Welcome back to Enjoying the Word. I want to think about something uh, that, that I, I suspect is a fairly common thought among believers, among Christians, and that is the whole issue of differences. We can easily become discouraged because good Christians or good scholars come to different opinions, different conclusions as they are studying the passage that maybe we're looking at. And we think, well, if they can't agree and they've got original languages and access to libraries and resources and all the knowledge and all the insight that comes from, you know, a lifetime of publishing in the area, if they can't agree, what hope is there for me sitting here with my Bible trying to make sense of it? And so the difference is can not only discourage us, they can lead us to despair. I want to just address that in this video. And uh, I, I kind of take, the, I'm literally actually taking the, uh, the, the points that I'm going to make from a chapter in this book, 40 Questions About Interpreting the Bible by Robert Plummer. I haven't read the whole book, but what I've read so far has been really helpful. And so I'm just going to take his points. I'm not going to read it out or give you all the the, the kind of arguments he makes, but I'm just going to use his points and talk my way through them. Hope that's okay. So good scholars, good Christians disagree. So what do we do? First point he makes is this. Non-Christians can be expected to misunderstand and distort the Bible. Non-Christians. What's he referring to? There's a lot of people that are writing books or teaching, preaching, even preaching in some churches that don't actually have a personal relationship with God. Now, that doesn't mean that everything they say will be automatically wrong. The Bible is not completely obscure and hidden to non-Christians, but there is a spiritual reality that those who are not in relationship with God are still blinded by the God of this age. There is an implication there that um, we don't want to listen to everything that anyone says, even if they sound clever, even if they've been published. I've got books on the shelf behind me. It's kind of my personal study library, and I'm very blessed to have it. I'm thankful for the books that are there, but not every one of them is written by somebody who knows and loves Jesus. There's books that do good technical work in the text that might provide some level of insight, but perhaps the person writing it isn't Christian at all. Maybe they're completely liberal, don't believe that God uh, even exists, and yet what they're doing with the text might be helpful to me. So I'm just recognising that if we're listening to people that don't know God, then misunderstanding and distortion is going to happen. Okay, so we've got to recognise that as a foundational point. The second point, though, I think is also really helpful. The amount of disagreement among genuine believers is overstated. So genuine believers, those that know and love Jesus, actually are going to come to a level of agreement on a lot of aspects of Bible study. Now, there is still going to be disagreement, and that's where we can end up discouraged and even despairing, but let's not overstate it. Okay, like he says here, don't overstate the disagreement. Even on uh, contentious issues, there's a level of agreement among all genuine believers but some of the specifics there may be differences on. So issues like divorce and remarriage or the role of women in the church or spiritual gifts and how they should function today. There's a whole host of subjects that we might call secondary issues. They're not the primary ones in terms of who God is and how salvation works and what the Bible is. And those primary things tend to be source of majority agreement. They have to be for genuine believers. And so there's a lot that there is agreement on, but there are issues where there are disagreements. But even within those issues, there's a lot that people will agree on, all right, even where there's differences. And so let's not overstate it. Let's not think like, whoa, this is impossible because everybody's disagreeing with everybody on everything. No, actually, if you take a, a hundred Christians from a variety of backgrounds, but people who are genuine, who have a love relationship with God, who've been welcomed into his family, have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them and give them a Bible passage, they will come to a massive amount of agreement as they study it in terms of what that passage means. There may be some differences and we've got to be honest and recognize that, but let's not despair because it shouldn't be overstated. I think that's a really helpful point. Number three, God did not reveal all issues with the same clarity. Now, the Bible is clear 
but it doesn't mean that the Bible is crystal clear on everything at the same level. There are some things that we wish it was clearer on. Now, let me just say this. Let's not jump to uh, this kind of point here. The moment we find ourselves struggling with a passage, oh, it's not clear. It probably is clearer than you realise. You've got to do more work. And if it's a specific issue, you've got to chase the whole Bible and say, okay, what is said about this throughout the scriptures before we start saying this is an area where there's, you know, a lack of clarity. So with that said, let's just recognise there will be some points where people differ. And then he goes on and he says interpreters have varying levels of knowledge and skill. Uh, That's true also of people that write, by the way. There's some people that know far more than some others of us that write and get published. So knowledge and skill is going to vary even among published authors. Uh, Spiritual illumination and diligence, uh, speaking there about uh, leaning into God and you know really help uh, looking for his help in understanding and applying his word in our lives there will be different levels of that between different people now what we can't say is well I've really prayed hard about this for several hours and so I know I'm right that's not the way it works but equally if we go to the opposite extreme and disregard God Uh, that might have an impact on what we're seeing as we study the text. And we've all got varying levels and differences in our biases. I've got biases, you've got biases. None of these things should cause us to give up on the interpretation process. We have to study the Bible to seek to understand what it means and then to diligently apply it in our lives. Okay, so where there's disagreement, there doesn't need to be despair. I suppose we could summarise like this. We need to be humble. None of us know everything about anything. And so there needs to be humility. But that's not the same as giving up and saying, well, I'm just being humble. There's disagreement. Who can know? That's not humility. That's quitting. Let's not do that. Be humble as you study. Don't despair because there are differences go for it. Study the Bible. Wrestle through the issues. Come to conclusions, but hold them with a a gentle and a humble grip rather than being dogmatic uh, before you've, you know, achieved some level of, of profound understanding. But I think that's the way to go. Don't despair. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't use it as an excuse to not study your Bible, to not come to conclusions. No, be humble. Don't despair and study it wrestle with it take on board anything that's helpful and seek to understand and enjoy the word of god there's there's disagreements but there doesn't need to be despair i hope that's helpful and uh keep enjoying the word